Hey, is that good? Hi. I don't know. Okay, that was a little piratey. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going for detective, but I think I did pirate. <laughs> Grizzle yeah. detective, to be specific. Hey, but I think uh, you're right. I oh, sure. Pirate. Okay. I hear it now. <laughs> it's <laughs> episode 51 of wow. Alex and Jim. Hey, you know what's great? I even had to do the hey again. <laughs> and that was not on purpose per your observation. <laughs> That's true. Um, uh, we were, the song I happen to pick is a song entitled You Can Never Get It Right the First Time. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Uh, is uh, Get It Right the First Time. Last week, if you haven't listened to that episode yet, what's wrong with you? Yeah, uh, go back, pause this. But if you haven't, I did include a link at the end of the video to Hey Girl, performed live by Billy Joel. Because here's the thing. So last week I picked a song that he did not write. That's what I did. <laughs> I oh, so you did. Write, which would be another good, great show. Alex and Jim analyzed the lyrics of songs Billy Joel didn't write. And then it could be anything. It'd be a, we could have so many episodes. So many episodes. Cart, uh, jingles. You know, um, yeah. I thought you were going to st start listing song titles. No. White Christmas. <laughs> yeah. uh, 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 ballroom Blitz. A Man Who uh, Takes His Time. <laughs> <laughs> the French National Anthem. But yeah. And that's a two-parter. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Paralyzed by the Dashboard Lights. That's probably the first one I pick. Yep. Because that, that is a great... Could have that's close to something he might write. Yeah. But it still doesn't count. Meatloaf did this really great trick where he wrote the dumbest wonderful songs. Yeah. He was a big dope. Uh, as a song. Yeah. But they're so fun to listen to. Yeah. Like two out of three ain't bad. It's just some of the dumbest lyrics. And yet it still manages to make me sad. It's a pretty right? good trick. Yeah. It's a really good trick. I think it's because you know there's just a big dumb schmo singing it. Yeah. You're like, oh, that's cute. I think also, too, when you're that bummed out, that's how you'd really say it. Because you're not right. all clever when you're bummed out. <laughs> you're, right. you're just bummed out. Yeah. You could yeah. never dig for oil in a city street. Yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's kind of like if you uh, just were listening to a sad song and then you were, and you were like, this is not very well written. And you, somebody said, well, it was written by a golden retriever. And you go, oh, oh. that's really good then. <laughs> that's really good oh. for a golden retriever. Uh, if you could find that golden retriever, sign him. Sign him up. Yeah. You're going to make money off that golden retriever. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to try to think of the title of the movie. I but... think, it, well, the title of his first album, album is Songs on a Lonely Walk. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just a picture of him walking. He's got a leash on, but there's no owner. It's a very artsy kind of thing, but it's a it's a good album. I'll say. I don't know whoever did the photography, they did a nice job because you get the sense that he's looking for his owner. Oh, not easy to pull off. Yeah. Like how I, I like the transition. I, I do this bit a lot. I like transitioning from we made the thing up, now it's real. <laughs> One of my favorite <laughs> dumb joke transitions. Yeah. So I, I picked uh hey girl. Billy Joel did not write it. It was written right. by Carol King, you said, right? That's right. Now we yeah. technically could have done it, I think, because I mean, yeah, we don't have rules. Yeah. As I can tell. It's it's in Billy Joel involved. Yeah, but so we, the we could have, although the title implies that Billy Joel's written. The yeah, lyrics. that's true. That's our, which guys, because I think that's really the only rule is as much <laughs> as that's 
the yeah. But here's they're, the thing, they're, and I could not Billy Joel lyrics just because he sings them. Yeah, he has to be the one who wrote. Okay. Can you imagine? I it's hard for me to picture Billy Joel doing covers. Did he do a bunch? He did several for sure. What are some other covers that he's done? Uh, back in the USSR. Oh, okay. But did he record it? Yeah, it's on oh, that so Russia album. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's a live live album, but okay. Technically recorded. Um, there's a Dylan cover on Stormfront. Yeah. Or the other one, the River of Garbage. <laughs> <laughs> um, River of Garbage, gosh. River of Garbage. But there it is a straight up cover song, yeah. Oh, earlier, by the way, uh, early in this week, I got into a little online tiff with somebody, and it was because they were making fun of Miley Cyrus because she did some cover of a song, and, she, and, they, and he was like, yeah, what is this, karaoke? Or karaoke, I guess is how it said. <laughs> but karaoke, you know, and I said, uh, yeah, all oh, covers are dumb, right? Sinatra was terrible. Sinatra was the worst. <laughs> and I and I remember remember the Beatles and all the dumb covers they did on like their first four albums, and they got mad and shut up, which was great. Such a, <laughs> dumb, such a dumb critique. Ah, who does covers? Uh, I don't know. Uh, everyone. Yeah, that's not a hill for dying on. <laughs> yeah, this is the problem with everything now. Is everybody wants to die on every hill? <laughs> yes. No, you can't. I don't have the energy to have all the fights yeah and not it's, everything is a fight yeah yeah like i posted one See, time i'm agreeing with you thank you no you you're prove not your point. <laughs> prove your point uh to make you feel my love which is the dylan cover that is you on whichever, whichever album I probably would have picked that too. I didn't know that was Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I wish I would have picked it just after Hey Girl. I was like, okay, well, we'll do this one. <laughs> All right, we'll do that USSR song he wrote where he's back there. So you picked Hey Girl. Yeah. Which we determined was uh, not eligible. Yeah. Disqualified. Then you picked another song with an ironic. I Get it right the first time. And which I pointed out, uh, you had not done. Yeah. And it was and offline, so it wasn't, uh, now it has an audience. My, yeah. my report has found a home. <laughs> which really, honestly, you said it should have said it the first time. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm pointing out you didn't get that part right the first time. I didn't either. get that right. I didn't get that right the first time. <laughs> uh, and then now, but, we, told them that we tried to start this uh, podcast and I had no audio. Yep, you had no audio. So this, I, we also didn't get this right the first time. And when we first, when I first logged in, I was on fire. That's right, not, not right. the way to do it. No. So now you're not. You got a microphone, I got water. Now we're okay. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you mentioned, and please tell me about this. I guess somebody did a cover of this. Get it right the first time. Uh, Donny Osmond performed it live at, I think it was the 1980 Miss USA pageant. Oh, my God. Um, apropos of what, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, hitting on pageant contestants, I guess. It is a song about hitting on someone. Yeah. Wow. That's. <laughs> How was it? How was his cover? He did not make it his own. It sounded like uh, croaky. It was croaky. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like croaky. Um, yeah. Like he was trying to do the voice a little bit. 
Um, but the background singers were very, they did make it their own. Um, it was very, that late seventies, early eighties where there's very, we're very clearly singing the lyrics. We're not in the background. Oh yeah, or singing we're singing along. We're next to you. Yeah. Um, there was, you know, there are always used to be someone singing a song and then a row of three ladies singing most of the same words. Yeah. And we did that for a hundred years. Yeah. <laughs> before yeah. the before the second British invasion. I the I will point this out by the one of the many things that I've noticed about the Beatles that I really like, and I kind of think they were the first to do this. Mm-hmm. And so uh, sometimes a back sing uh, the background singer well echo you know they'll sing it a second later right the beatles would do this thing where the background singer would start the lyric on a couple of songs there i might even be in help try to um, i might be wrong but the next time you're in the beatles mood notice they'll do that they'll switch that up that's fun yeah and it's noticeably different but it's not jarring or unpleasant it's just kind of cool and I don't know if it was them going, eh, every idiot does this. Let's do this thing instead. They did a lot of that. Yeah. Where they'd be like, oh, let's do it uh, differently. Yep. They, <laughs> and they, they do different, you know, different, you know, instead of doing a 4 4 all the time, they change up the time signature. Um, and then I would not know that that was what was going on, but someone p- would point it out and I would go, oh, but I like that song, Bill. So that's yeah, good. All I know is it made me feel different. That's all I know. Yeah, it's a good little before. trick. Yeah. Another Here's my... Go ahead. Sorry, I'm t- talking over you a lot tonight. Or I just won't stop talking. <laughs> You're talking under me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, our, that's our unique take on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. Can we say about so many Billy Joel songs, this could be a 70s theme song from a different thing. And this one could too. Yes. Holy shit. Yes. This could be about like a newspaper editor. A newspaper, yeah, absolutely. A newspaper editor and the, and they are on budget constraints for sure. Yep. We don't have a lot of money for editing. And he's So you better, hey girl. Yeah, he's being pressured. He's being <laughs> pressured to do stuff for the advertisers. It's gritty and unpleasant. And, you know, hey, that thing you said about the mayor's son, you can't say that because our license is up for renewal. It's that kind of story. A lot of that. Can't so print that story about, the, yeah, the mayor's daughter got arrested. Um, that's the story about uh, police over policing. Yeah, you can't do that. And then uh, (laughs) whoever the star is, is a little fatter than Lou Grant. That's who the star is in that show. (laughs) Meatloaf. Yeah, it's Meatloaf. That a great show. Short-lived Meatloaf uh, sitcom. And side note, before we start the lyrics, how weird is it that Mary Tyler Moore was a comedy and somehow Lou Grant became a TV show that was a drama? That was a drama. I don't, has that trick ever been pulled since? Was Frasier a drama? <laughs> no, <laughs> but um, the well, Nash character, that... Trapper John. Oh, hell yeah. Trapper John. Is, is there a third example? I don't think so. I don't think so. After MASH wasn't very funny, but I don't think that means it was a drama. Yeah, that just means it was garbage. The bad comedy. Yeah, it was like, hey, let's take all the side characters. And yeah. who can't remember all possibly... your favorite characters? <laughs> yeah. Forget about them. Yeah. We got Klinger. Is he still <laughs> wearing dresses? No. No, we got over it. Yeah. And it didn't <laughs> stay in Korea, as it turns out. That's right. Did they bring his wife with? Was she part of the show? Oh man, do not know. Where's Goble when you need him? Never nearby, I'll tell you that much. That's right. Thank God. All right, so 
let's get it right the first time. <laughs> and, and let me make sure I have the correct lyrics. Yes, I do. Uh, I think you started last time. Very this well. Is a, this, is, <laughs> this is off The Stranger, which I'll remind you he is boxing gloves on the wall. I guess he used to fight, right? That's right. And That's why his nose looks like that. Yeah, and a weird mask on the bed, which is a that's weird. A, the stranger, I guess. Yeah, uh, that's more the murderer, right? That's who wears that. It's. I think it's like the theater kid. Oh, that's a pretty murdery mask. Yeah, that's what I was. It, I know. I don't think that's what we're going for. No. But, yeah. I do or, like it. He wears that mask and goes out and boxes people. <laughs> I would pay boxes to see that fight. He I would pay. To death. Oh, that's a great <laughs> idea for a, a horror movie. A guy who boxes people to death. That's really funny. Oh, my God. They could report that uh, in Meatloaf's paper. <laughs> All the... the. The uppercut killer. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, he didn't manage to kill that lady. Why? Well, she's got more reach. <laughs> <laughs> she had the reach on him. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. All right, let's see what. Oh, I did that wrong. Look, I did another thing wrong. Sweet. Hold on. Oh, killing it. Come on, stop doing things wrong, Jim. Uh, okay, let's escape. Oh, man. There we go. Catchphrase. <laughs> there we go. All right. <laughs> There you go now. I can't see. There you go. All right. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Is that good? Can you see me? Yep. All right. I'm going to start reading the lyrics. Love it. But for sure, 70s is all hell. This is just very much 1977, which I believe is the year of Star Wars. I don't believe in first impressions. For just this once, I hope that looks don't deceive. I ain't got time for true confessions. I've got to make the move right now. I've got to meet that girl somehow. I've got to get it right the first time. That's the main thing. What do you think of that? Um, I think once again... He's uh, psyching himself up to hit on a lady. Yeah. Which we're now starting to see as a theme. Yeah. Uh, sleeping with the television on. Yeah. Um, Zanzibar. Got that waitress he likes, but yeah. will not speak to. Sometimes a fantasy. Tell her about it. Oh, yeah, tell her about it. I was lecturing somebody else on how to hit on. <laughs> so really, maybe string them all together. <laughs> Uh, tell her about it. Get it right the first time. Zanzibar. Perfect. That is perfect. <laughs> What's that rule called? The, 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 the third one doesn't make sense. Is that the rule? Yeah. I don't know. Get it wrong the third time. That's right. <laughs> so I don't believe in first impressions for just this once. I hope that looks don't deceive. So I guess we're, we don't believe in first impressions, but we're gonna give it a shot this time. Yeah, I don't know what looks are possibly deceiving. Her yeah. looking at, like the way she's looking at him. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I think it's more just stone cold sexism. She looks so pretty. I can't believe she turned out to be mean. You know? <laughs> yeah. I can't, I can't believe that it wasn't, more than skin deep. Who has told me that forever? Yeah. I like the use of ain't here, by the way. It uh, feels appropriate. It doesn't feel hamstrung. It doesn't feel like we're trying to sound like a rocker. I think it actually well, works. I think that's probably how he really talks or talked. Yeah. Uh, on Long Island. I do. And there is some preparation going on because it's also the song is very Latin. Ah, that's true. A lot of Latin vibes, which yeah. we were, uh, that was, the 70s was all about stealing that too. Yeah. A lot of like, oh, uh, those, the Latin folk uh, 
have good music. Oh, These, well, uh, Jim has left yeah. the chat. <laughs> the dogs <laughs> keep crying one way or the other, so I'm just leaving the door open. Uh, very funny little guys. Um, yeah. Oh, you know what? I wasn't even picking up on the Latin thing, but you're a hundred percent right. It just didn't dawn on me as all because I it's reasonably subtle, I guess. I guess like it's, it's not it's so bad. The, the flute. Yeah, that's true. There's a flute that comes in. That's not even Latin. That's like it's like uh, I don't know. It made me think of the Robin Hood soundtrack. <laughs> it's like just little flutes coming in, yeah. lightening the mood. It's a good use of the flute, as far as that goes. Sure. It feels. Yeah, you can, you can overdo it. Yeah, for sure. A little flute goes a long way. <laughs> if that's not a saying, man, it should be. A little <laughs> flute goes a long way. Hey, and by the way, looking at this, kind of a lot of lyrics for this song. Not too yeah. much, but it's, it's good. It's not like the thing where you go, okay, well, here he repeats that thing again. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, a lot of repeated sentiments. Yeah. With different words. Well, that's our Billy Joel for you. Gotta meet yeah. that girl somehow. Gotta make the move right now. Gotta meet that girl somehow. Wow, he hasn't even met her. No. So he and hasn't he's even very worked up. Yeah. He's screwing up the courage to walk over to her and he's worked up. Gotta get it right the first time. That's the main thing. Well, I'll say this. You're right. If you haven't actually met her, this is the part not to jack up. Right. It's probably, you could get it right the second time. Yeah. Your, your odds went down. For sure. Yeah. First impressions are lasting impressions. That is a saying. Yeah. Unlike the thing about the flutes. Which is just something that should be a saying. Right. I'm going to go read this now. Get it right the first time. That's the main thing. I can't afford to let it pass. Get it right the next time. That's not the same thing. <laughs> Gotta that's make a good one. Last. I'll ju just pipe it in to say, I like that rhyme. You like that's it, the, the rhyme? Main, I like, yeah, I like it, the rhyme. The main <laughs> thing and the same thing. I like that. that I like yeah. the way that sounds. I think it's very funny to say, get it right the first time. Great. Get it right the next time. Not the same thing. I mean, the, yeah. it's more clarity than you usually get from song lyrics. Yeah, true. And then Sue pointed out a uh, very clever wordplay. Uh, Going to make the first time last. Yeah, that is great. Now, here's the question I always ask. Yeah. Is that on purpose? <laughs> I think so. Okay, it's good. Too tidy. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's also a weird thing to say. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I think he was in it for the wordplay, and it doesn't quite mean anything. Yeah. Got to make the first impression last, I guess. Yeah. I'm going to say he meant to do that. Yeah, I think the so height too. of I his mean, powers. <laughs> the height of his powers. Before he got punch drunk. <laughs> Before they turned him into a rocker <laughs> or glass houses. So that was the chorus. Yeah, you, right? you keep going. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. All right. I'm not much good at conversation. <laughs> well, I never was much good at coming on real strong. If all it takes is inspiration, then I might have just what it takes. If I don't make no bad mistakes, and then into the chorus. Yeah. You know, I, he... not, I guess he's not including grammar mistakes. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> if I don't make no bad mistakes, this, by the way, uh, Billy Joel has let us know in many, many convert in many, many songs that he is not <laughs> good at chit chat. Yeah, doesn't like it. No, doesn't have time for it. Yeah, 
not good at it. And then doesn't understand why it didn't work out. <laughs> I don't like to talk. Yeah. Where are you going? <laughs> Women, people in relationships love it when you don't want to talk about stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's funny. And Sometimes that... I find that funny. Now I actually feel bad for him. I'm like, oh, somebody at some point who was in the studio should go, hey, I know you don't like to talk, but you're going to end up divorced, divorced against her too. Maybe start chatting. Yeah. Or stop marrying. Also a good solution. <laughs> Got options. You're a wealthy man. Yep. You don't have to talk, but quit marrying them. Because when you marry people, that's what they fucking want. They is want chit -chat. How chit -chat. much you want to bet, by the way, he's a chit chatter now because he's an older fella and the hormones have gone down. Hormones have gone down. More stories than ever. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And nobody wants to hear him. Now he's on the shoe is on the other. Oh, now. Mouth. Oh, sure. Now you want to talk. <laughs> now that you're boring. Yeah, that's right. Now that you, <laughs> now that you can't get a boner. You want to chat. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Okay. Oh, my, I never was smooth at coming on real strong. If all it takes is inspiration, I kind of like that line. If all it takes is inspiration, of course, that's not all it takes. But no. then I might. That's just like crossing your fingers. Is wanting it good enough? <laughs> yeah is wanting the same as deserving <laughs> i sure hope so now we we give we give them credit uh first time last is on purpose he uh -huh. is the sort of regular dude weird grammar on purpose too because it kind of feels like a character in a way it, it does yeah it, it, but the character is him yeah Character is like an accurate representation of him, whereas his actual opinion of himself is probably too high. Yeah. So he's like, oh, I'll play this like I'm dumb. I was like, oh, but, <laughs> but you are kind of dumb. You're um, nailing I, I, it I, every day. <laughs> hey, what if I was a dumb guy? Oh, yeah, <laughs> try that. I wish it was big mistakes or something. Yeah. If I don't make no bad mistakes is like four mistakes. Yeah. Um, I don't know this girl. She might not be a stickler. Right. Her, uh, but already I don't like your chances. Yeah. Yeah. What if I played this guy like he was a guy who's a little shorter than he'd prefer? <laughs> well, that's what I pretended I was. Gonna like try to channel a bad driver. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's great! And <laughs> working oh. out of the league. By the way, I, I, over time, I've come to appreciate Horatio Sands' Billy Joel <laughs> impression. <laughs> it is, yeah, it is like if Billy Joel did impressions. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah, it's so funny. Oh yeah. Like, oh yeah, and that's not good. But yeah, I good like, try, good try. Lots of energy. Yeah. I like how you don't sound like anybody. I like that part. <laughs> yeah. You but, sound a little but, bit like Ratio Sands. Yep. Uh, I have Rudolph is magic in that sketch though. So to me, oh. her yelling from the vaccine is the best thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and the mailbox. I always well, that looks, that's pretty good. I think those were you were there during that when that happened, right? That was a little years. before my time. Was it okay? Yeah. Um, but I knew like the guys who, whenever there was that kind of sketch, there are guys who have to crouch and throw the mailbox into the into view. And so, oh. like, I knew all of those guys, and they love that shit. That's a fun gig, yeah so happy when they get to do that stuff <laughs> gotta get it right the first time that's the main thing can't afford to let it pass you uh -huh. gotta get it right the next time that's not the same thing gonna have to make the first time last okay so they of course just repeats yeah. i might find the courage yeah i might get up the nerve 
This is but a bridge. My, yeah. But if my timing ain't just right, what purpose would it serve? Oh, man. I do wow. like him talking himself out of it. That's very real. Dude, that is very real. God, if you're a dude, I'm sure ladies have been in that position, but for sure as a dude trying to make something happen, seeing a pretty girl at a place where you're allowed to ask him to dance. It I really is like oh. impossible. Yep. Yeah. And it, you know, you're right 98% of the time. Yeah. It is not going to happen or work. Yeah. So I could try and then I could fail. That's that feeling. God. Right. Um, I, you, I like not thinking past the moment. Yeah. But you can't do it. Even on the walk over there, you're like, oh, but fuck. Oh, no. <laughs> what if it's the wrong time? What if, oh, uh, where? Uh, yeah, you do have to talk yourself out of it twice <laughs> and then talk yeah. yourself back in and then you get annoyed with yourself to the point where you're like oh fuck idiot just go over there and then you just get all mad at yourself and carry that energy over there yep and immediately say something weird or that you <laughs> think is a joke and you're like okay well yep Hey, is that dress red? Oh, fuck. <laughs> blue it. <laughs> it's just hard know. to tell lights are blue in here. Um, oh, fuck. Oh, yeah. I might get up the nerve, but what purpose would it serve? He's really talking himself out of this. This is great, actually. I love this lyric. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how. To say those first few words, oh Lord, buddy, Lord, that's great. <laughs> uh, I'll stop there because there's not a lot left. I want to let you have stuff to talk about, but um, <laughs> and also just I really do like that lyric. I think it yeah, expresses I like the repetition, something. Uh, the repetition of I don't know. Yeah, is something we've all literally done out loud, probably in a bar or party situation. For sure. And I always like a song that expresses a sentiment that you can't necessarily find in too many other songs. And this one feels like, I mean, I'm sure it's been somewhere, but it doesn't feel like well-trod uh, feelings right there. That's good. Uh, you know what I'm enjoying right now is the, the tension between this, where he's it, about himself, He's like, oh, God, it's so hard. You got to get the timing right. The first impression is very important. Uh, don't fuck this up. And then another song where he's just like, tell her about it. <laughs> you got to go over there and tell her right now. That's all there is to it. Okay, goodbye. Yeah. Because that's how and it that, is. When, when it's you, it's torture. Yeah. And somebody else, you're like, just go over there. What just, go yeah. just go say and something. Yeah. And also, isn't that just, just what's going yeah, on? Yeah, not that great. Yeah, right. That's Say something. I'm great if that was part of tell her about it. She ain't <laughs> that pretty anyhow. But that's also the difference between 77 and I guess 87 or whatever. That's yeah. 20 years. Old man talking to young man. Old this man also young. 70s decade of self-reflection. Yeah. He's decade of uh, stealing whatever you wanted and making it your own. Yep. Decade of your only chance of meeting someone was bar or place. <laughs> where, where else are you going to meet them? Especially if you are now at that age where you've decided you're not going to church because mom did, <laughs> you don't want to. So you're not going to meet a girl there. Nope. Meet her at a bar, meet her at your dumb job. Fine. Right. You don't go to the grocery store. No, this guy for sure doesn't go to the grocery store. Yeah. No. Yeah, it's bodega all... or liquor store. Yeah. <laughs> and women don't go in there. No. Yeah, where are you? Yeah, you're doomed. The so subway? You're... Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're you're now a creep. She's calling the police. Yeah. 
And what you don't know as a young man is, oh, sometimes ladies are lonely and are hoping they'll meet someone nice too. Sure. And the other thing you don't know is like, you could just meet someone without spilling all of your intentions immediately. (laughs) (laughs) You could just say hello and have a conversation about the news or whatever, and then go away. Yep. I uh, I am still unaware of that fact, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> you, I have to remember the other way now that when I'm talking to a woman, she might think that I'm hitting on her. Where I'm like, oh no, I really just want to know if, where you got that salad. <laughs> I can't walk too far anymore. So is it close where you got the salad? Yeah. You have to remember like, oh, I'm a man and she might be <laughs> scared. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. Very true. Very true. Especially in a work environment. You can freak people out accidentally is what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. I did something semi-mature the other day with, by withholding information. So I used to do this thing. Well, Mary Jo and I uh, had three miscarriages, which is if you're, if you don't know, are three more than you want. Uh, You know, I I don't know you, maybe you want one, but we don't want any of them. Uh, And, but so, but we've gotten to the age where when people find out how long we've been married, inevitably they're like, oh man, how many kids do you have? Or are your kids out of school? Sometimes they'll just assume. Sure, sure. And, and because I found it funny and it made me mad anyway, I would often go, oh, no, no, our kid, uh, kids aren't in school. They died a long time ago, I would say. <laughs> oh, no, no. Because that made me mad that I got, had, but then I thought, it's not their fault. They're just being people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just trying to make conversation. So they're like, do you have kids? And I said, no, no, me and my wife love dogs and that's good enough for me. We like, we like having our place tidy. And I was yeah, like, oh, it would be good. weirder. I feel like anyway, it'd be a lot weirder if they said, oh my God, you've been married that long? Do you have kit? Wait a minute. You didn't have miscarriages, did you? That'd be weird. Even if you got it right yeah. the first time. Nice job, by the way. <laughs> this was a really good save on my part. Uh, I will say that if I'm ever at a party and somebody did that, I would love that person. (laughs) (laughs) You get? What if you tried to cover all your bases? Woo. Yeah. They they were killed in kindergarten? No. (laughs) It turned out they were, you kidnapped them and then they found out and tried to kill you. And they're in jail. The your state, kid, t- the state that you took must them? have because <laughs> you've so long. Oh, son of a gun! <laughs> Anybody, honest, if you see me at a party, surprise me with that because that's really funny. I promise, <laughs> I'm the one guy who won't be offended. I will find it delightful. It's true. You kind of give off uh, unoffendable vibes. I think maybe it'll happen for you. Uh, well, people have said weird things to me for no goddamn reason. People barely say anything to me because I look like I'll be mad. Yeah, I get a lot of, uh, this is what I think I'm getting it's at fine. This age. By the way, if you see me on the street, don't say anything to me. Yeah, it's working. <laughs> I get a lot of projection now at this age. I don't know what's happened and I don't mind it. What do you mean? But People will, people I just meet will share complicated feelings with me pretty quick before I've said anything. Ah, yeah. And I don't mind, and I'm happy to listen, and I and I keep my mouth shut. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know, but I don't know why I seem like that guy's a good ear. I don't know, but for some reason I seem that way to people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's true. You are a good yeah. ear, but how do they know? Yeah, how do, how they, do they know? know? So it must be something I put off, put out. 
I yeah. did put out. <laughs> we have a welcoming energy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I probably, so people, some people, I've said this before, some people are tall, some people are short. I'm exactly average. I wonder if that's why. I'll bet it doesn't hurt. Yeah. I have, my theory is that approachability all has to do with eyebrow thickness. And if you have very thick eyebrows, people are scared of you. And if you don't, they find you approachable. You might be right, because mine are the same color as my skin, more or less. So <laughs> it's an experiment someone should do. Not right, me. I'm, put on more eyebrow. Huh. Let's see what happens. I'm like, <laughs> nobody wanted to approach me when I was wearing a bunch of Groucho Marx makeup. Huh. <laughs> Oh, uh, it works. It's true. Solid science here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're, uh, so let's get back to the first time. And where were we? Where we were the first few moments. So uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to say those first few words. You said that part. Yeah. If I want to put myself in touch, the first few moments mean so much. That's a forced rhyme, I think. Yeah. It's a weird thing to say, put myself in touch. Yeah. I want to put yeah. myself in touch. That's not an expression. No, and the closest it is, is when you mean to make a phone call with somebody you already know, like I'll keep in touch. That's the closest. Keep in touch. Or I'll put not you a new person. Else in touch. I'll put Jim in touch with Dave. Yeah. I can't put myself in touch. I just call Dave. That's yeah. what that's yeah that's just called a phone call yeah it's called calling and it's almost in the word touch in this context is weird anyway just because it's a girl you're just meeting yeah so it's not the word yeah yeah leave the touching out although Agreed. in the yeah, 70s you touch anybody you wanted to that's probably true a different time yeah young listeners <laughs> don't, don't try it now Oh, hell's oh, no. Not. Hell's no. Also, no, don't true. start. Don't say, don't say hell's either. Yeah. <laughs> that was a different time. <laughs> that was a different time. Back in the old day, we had like four hells. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you Each know. Politics. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think uh, a couple of them they made into state parks. So, right. Yes, yeah. two Which state parks. Good, One became a blockbuster. That's right. <laughs> then it went out of business. It yeah. was doing great as a hell. I I know I loved going there. People would uh, tell you all the time, Jim, you got to go to hell. Yeah, people are still telling yeah. me that. Yeah. That's what I mean when I say people open up to me. They just tell me to go to hell. <laughs> uh. So I suppose it's now or never before that woman walks right out of my life. Just let me pull myself together. I gotta give it one good try. Gotta take my chance tonight. Uh, gotta get it right the first time. This is the main thing. Chorus, chorus, chorus. So this is the moment. Yeah. I like to get. Thank God um, the song ends before he walks over there. Yeah, and that's I'm true. I'm so worried about him at this point. <laughs> He's now worked himself up into a froth. I said, it's now or never before she walks yeah. right out of my life. This, she's going to leave. Yeah. All her friends are getting their purses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. It's a great, it buttons up nice. I will say that lyrically it buttons up because he brings us right to the point where he's going to go talk to the girl. Yep. And now he either has gotten the courage or if we stayed a little longer, we realize he starts to walk over and, he, and she turns around and goes, ah, and that's it. <laughs> I wish this was an 80s song now because this would have been a great video if you did a video, little story about him, and this is one of those videos that has a little bit of film that's not the song. Like Tell Her yep. About It has that where we're at, where you know it's got Rodney Dangerfield's and Tell Her About It. 
yep. he's about to go on stage. If they show you the thing where he comes up to the girl and he says something to her, she turns around and it's like, you know, say it's Johnny Carson in a wig or something. <laughs> And then that's the funny joke is like, oh, it turned out. Well, maybe it's Rodney Dangerfield again. They get him back for this video. Sure, sure. They worked together before. Yeah. And then he's dressed as a lady. And everybody loves it when a funny comic dresses as a lady. In the 70s, they did. Man, they cannot get enough of it then. In the 80s. And probably less now. So now. Less now. so. Yeah. Less, less so. so but still some, but less. Yeah. I think um, now your intention has to be clear, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or you just wear a dress and yeah. not like act weird. Just be like, yeah, I, I wear dresses. What? When I was in a trouser shock, a little comedy group, I wrote this sketch called Dude in a Wig. And the premise was this guy. I is dating this lady and I go, I don't know what it is about you, but you're a really special lady and blah, blah, blah. And I don't know what it is that really makes us mesh. And he goes, well, maybe it's because I'm just a dude in a wig. And I go, maybe. And we talk about, I really <laughs> love, and at one point I go, my favorite thing is I love how your vagina gets engorged in blood and sticks out in front of you. And he goes, I think it's because it's a penis. I think that's why. <laughs> and I, I think the character I wrote is just so brutally closeted, but he's found a way to make peace with it. Oh, nice. One of my favorite sketches. And the ending line is I do something, I do it. He's mad that I can't just accept who I am, but then he, I've gotten him playoff tickets. So he's like, oh, that's very sweet. Because then he goes, uh, you know what? It doesn't matter. Let's just go home where I can stick my vagina in your butthole. <laughs> Oh man, you always wrote it all the way to the end. Yep. Yep. I love that tag so much. <laughs> oh, that was one of our, our live killers. That one always worked. That was a, yeah. Oh, that's a closer. That really is. Put your vagina in my butthole. It was flawless. Let me tell you the unfortunate truth about how this video would end. Yeah. It would be him finally walking over to the girl. Cut to the girl and her friends leaving the bar. The bar door closes. He does that thing where he puts one hand on the bar door. Oh, she's gone. And then some lady puts her hand on his shoulder and turns him around. Yeah. And that's how it ends. And, and then you fade Chris. out, and then it's Kurt Loder. <laughs> it's Kurt Loder, that's right. <laughs> Who was your favorite VJ? Was it Kurt Loder? Um, no, I think it was uh, Downtown Julie Brown. I like Julie Brown, too. I like the Downtown Julie Brown. Got that energy. I worked with her once. <laughs> <laughs> Great. She was Which not nice like to me. Oh no! Nice to me. That could be delightful. Maybe I uh, open and approachable. No. Yeah. No. Never be here. What's her name? Uh, Kennedy. Was it Kennedy? And Kennedy. Yeah. A right wing nut or something. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. She fooled us with the glasses. Julie Brown, downtown Julie Brown, was when one of those annoying things where. Sometimes back, there was a certain point when you would be talking about Julie Brown. Yeah. And then you'd have to clarify. <laughs> yeah. The really funny one? No, the VJ. No, the VJ? Downtown. No, the funny one. So downtown. You had to say downtown, Julie Brown. I'd say downtown. That's right. The fucking rocking nickname. Yeah. Do you think given to her as a VJ? Or predated VJ. Feel like she came in with it. I, I hope so. I hope so because if they gave it to her, then they were just going, "Yeah, she's black." Yeah. Hey, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Yeah, I hope that nickname came with her, and, and I yeah. Most of the time, if they sound good, they do come with it because you know, 
we all remember the high school dick who wanted a nickname and it didn't work out because he can't do that. He can't yes. Do that. High school, college, you name it. Yeah. Did people do that in college too? I think so. Okay. There's a lot of attempted reinvention. Yeah. Because when I went to college, I was a bit older because I my college years were my working, trying not to be homeless years. Oh, yeah. So I went to school later. Yeah. <laughs> so I went to school later. So by then I, it was, yeah, people trying to I, live. Uh, when I was in high school, I got... I got drafted into this pre-college program where you would do a semester of a summer semester at college between your yeah. junior and senior year of high school. And I went to that and you lived in the dorm with all like smart kids from all over the state. And I tried to reinvent myself and make everybody call me Al. And it <laughs> worked. And but the the curse of it is I hated it. Oh, okay. I just wanted a different personality. So I was like, oh, if everybody calls me Al, I'll be different. And then I wasn't. Right. And then every time they called me Al, it was a taunt in my head. Yeah. About how poorly that worked out for me and my personality. That's funny. Yeah. Oh, it's fun being a person, isn't it? It's the worst. Yeah, Lord. I <laughs> You told me a thing on our show a while, some episodes ago, and I, I've remembered because I, I didn't know it, a philosophical, the curse of being human, I'm paraphrasing, is thinking there's solutions to every problem. Yeah, the Kurt Vonnegut quote. Yeah, I remember you saying that and it sticks with me. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, that's fucking right. Yeah, there just yep. might not be much more true that's ever been said he's really good at that yeah because because how many times and that's a good example you're like i'm gonna be different now you're not now you're not you're just who you are yep and you're gonna get constantly reminded that you're just yeah. who you are one of the greatest snl sketches of the modern era is uh there's this um a vac what's a vacation planner called <laughs> a travel uh, agent travel agent yeah God. <laughs> it's a travel agent and uh it's a uh, former cast members hosting oh my god i'm so great with names that doesn't really matter but the premise is he lets you know we can pl help you plan a great vacation but just know if you're sad at home you're probably gonna be sad there and it's all about yeah. how that Adam was Sandler. Great. Adam Sandler. Yep. Yep. I've watched that sketch a number of times and thought two things. I thought this sketch is great because it, it's funny, but it also makes me sad. <laughs> yes. And that's a pretty good trick for a stupid sketch to pull off. The sad, brutal truth. Yeah. You laugh. So now I got a, a dude back here, a young dude back there. Yeah, man. You recognize him. That's young uh, Doogie Hauser. That's right. That was played by Neil Patrick Harris. That is right. So what song could I possibly be referencing with a young Doogie Hauser MD? MD, for those that do, if you don't know the show, Medical uh, Doctor. Medical uh, Doctor. <laughs> But a little bit of trivia, by the way. I didn't know this. Do you know why he became a doctor? In the show? Yeah. Um, his dad? Something about his dad. Yes, but also something about him. It's a little darker than you'd think for such a show like this. Oh, was he ill? Yeah. Apparently as a youth, um, well, as a youth, he's still a youth, but when he was really young, he uh, managed... He, had cancer twice wow and his backstory was that and it you know he was in in and out of hospitals because he had cancer and he was a genius and he had a photographic memory so it made him interested in medicine because he had suffered himself huh it's a lot for a show like that right a lot they put a lot on those characters in yeah. those days 
that's when uh, TV shows went into de development for a long time. Yeah. They'd have backstory and, on everything. Look at that guy. Grows up to be a successful a adult doctor. actor. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tiny doctor. Hmm. Yeah, from that song by Elton John, Tiny Doctor. <laughs> tiny Doctor. Was that it? Did I get it? <laughs> <laughs> ah. Oh, no. I know. I know. It's so, it's such a, I think I kind of got to help you a little bit, but oh. because half the problem is in my head, oh, well, of course, who wouldn't get this? But, right. But what do we know about Doogie Hauser? Tell me something about Doogie Hauser. Man, see, this is what I don't know much of is the story of Doogie Not Hauser. Not much. You don't need to know much. What do you do for a living? <laughs> He certainly was a doctor. He's a doctor. How old was he? Like 12, 13, he was 14. young, yeah. 15. Like, like, what were you doing at that age? I was just going to school. You were just going to school. I mean, what, what, he already becomes, graduated. who would become a doctor at that age? I mean, doesn't that seem like he's, he taking, he's taking on a lot? That's an awful that lot for a kid. It's yes. too much. It's too much to handle. It's uh... <laughs> well, and who? What kind of person wants that much out of life? What is that quality you have? Oh, you have to be very driven. Yep. Yep. You do. Yep. You have to be driven. What's another uh, word for that? Uh, intense. Uh, yeah. Hardworking. Right. It's you not just work. hard work. You, you want. <laughs> and at that age to to be that gotta, at that age you gotta want it all you got yeah, you gotta what's be another a hard charging fella hard charging <laughs> and you want to you want to get more than other people because he's a damn doctor yeah you want to get ahead yeah gotta get it right the first time <laughs> that's right let's get it right the first time. <laughs> oh my god finally <laughs> oh well, he's 12, so what does that make him? Uh, the preteen. Yep. What else are they? The tween. Sure. What's the that? Kid. He's a the child. He's a middle schooler. Sure. Yep. Theoretically, he would be. He's if he not. A, I'll, I'll give you a real big hit. He's not a delinquent, for sure. He's not a delinquent. Oh, he's a good student. Yeah, but he's not a, de he's not a delinquent, but he no. is. He's well behaved. He, but he he's is what he's a good boy. He is what some delinquents. What he is what delinquents are also. Wow. Young juvenile. That's right. Juvenile. Oh, juvenile. Where I, I can't pull it. And man, he wants so much. He's a go-getter. You said. Yeah. <laughs> so how would you describe that juvenile? <laughs> <laughs> oh, a driven juvenile <laughs> he's an underage driver <laughs> oh man i'm so blank i'm on these new meds for blood pressure oh. and they're making me a dope that's all right um i'll tell you what <laughs> start at the beginning of the alphabet <laughs> he's a juvenile Yep, he's he's so E C juvenile D he's D F G. <laughs> keep, keep going, we're almost there. Uh, oh. Dave's gonna be so mad. <laughs> what? Who's gonna be Dave's mad? Gonna be, Dave, the guy who's like wants you to get the clue faster. <laughs> oh, that guy. <laughs> oh, uh, good dude, by the way. Know. Just that guy should chill. <laughs> these are hard this is kind of a hard one um but he really is a go-getter he really is the kind of person who wants to exceed mm, he's he wants to have things he's but an a word successful and, um, hmm. god damn it <laughs> you know what he probably shouldn't be so quick no slow down juvenile Slow down, you crazy child. You're so, You're so ambitious for a juvenile. 
so ambitious for a juvenile. Uh, see, I was with, I was on juvenile as a uh, an adjective. Yeah. And you had it there as a noun. So ambitious as a juvenile. Yeah. That's a pretty good clue, though, right? I I agreed. It's hard, but not bad, right? Yeah. Once you know it, which I didn't. Right. In advance, it's really good. Funny thing is I vacillate between pretty easy clues for yeah. deep cuts or pretty hard clues. And then you're like, oh, it's piano, man. When you said juvenile, I was like, oh, I know there's Billy Joel song with that word in it. And I can't hear it in my head because yeah. of the meds. Yeah. That's what I'm blaming. Certainly not the old age or the not caring very much. Dude, my <laughs> verbal aphasia is unreal right now. It's yeah. starting to make me mad. Like, you feel again, like it blows. Yeah. But for yeah. sure, I'm like, hey, there was this sketch on SNL. What's the uh, vacation planner? I, <laughs> the word is not there. It's not in the filing cabinet. Yeah. I think it's just uh, your priorities move away from getting the right word to uh, grander things. I'd like to hope. Well, I'm going to pretend that's what's happening to us. I hope that's true. I hope that's true. Because we're just getting grander. <laughs> that's yeah. our problem. I uh, too grand for your petty words. That's right for your petty being understood. I also had an emergency root canal this week. Oof. Yeah. Um, I'm uh, I'm a little shredded. Dude. Yeah, it was brutal pain, right? Uh, it wasn't because the nerve inside the tooth had died. Oh, okay. So it just, my the side of my head swelled up like a golf ball. Yeah. Full mystery until I went in. Anyway, not a great story, but it didn't hurt that's, very much. I'm at the age where that's a great story because you get to a certain age, you love to hear about the pains and stuff. Oh, yeah. Well, um, the stories I like now are like, I had a giant knot on the side of my head and it wasn't a tumor. The yep. end. Yeah. My friend, my friend Vance is a very funny comic and he's like, I'm an older man. Sorry, he will say. Yep. And he goes, how old am I? When I'm at parties, I talk about the last time I fell. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That, that is older. Yeah. He uh, added a tag that doesn't really work because I just don't think anybody young people can understand the falling part but yep. he added this tag that i understand he where he goes how old am i sometimes i'll look down and i'll go hey am i bleeding when did that happen oh no oh yeah 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 it's we the truth moved thing. into this apartment some time ago that has stairs i haven't lived in a place that has stairs inside the apartment ever ever um and moving in was like this is great upstairs downstairs different places to be and now when i get up in the morning and go downstairs i've done a little talk first they're like we're not in a hurry one at a time we're taking them diagonally and we're going to use the banister <laughs> that's where we're at because you don't have your Apple watch on yet yeah so if you eat it that's it. Dude, you know what's funny? I thought you were going to say, I take my time. Did we get everything we need from upstairs? <laughs> That's the crazy thing. Up, I perfectly fine to go up and down the stairs. Just like some part of my brain is like, if this goes askew, you won't do well with the landing. Nope. <laughs> um, and, um, you need to be near something where you can call some people. How sharp is the incline? Is it a pretty sharp incline too? It's a pretty sharp incline. There are these wooden steps that aren't super clearly delineated. So you have to like pay attention. And the banister is rickety. Can I make so. a recommendation and a for real recommendation? Yeah. You might want to find something like 
not wallpaper, of course, because that's not a wall, but something you could put on the stairs to make it easier to see. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Little grip strips or something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you could get that at Home Depot because they come in a roll. They're just. Oh, there you go. Yeah. And again, well, for just, one of our. That's my tomorrow. Yeah. One of our other podcasts. <laughs> I did not get a concussion. Dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like my, my said concussion, but you said the more true thing, which is. Man, my, my friend Vance says he's at that age too, and they're not even a joke, but he's at the age where he likes to read the obituaries. Oh, no. And he said, it's really funny how there's uh, a guy will leave, live an amazing life, and part of the obituary is fell off a ladder. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. World War II veteran. Yeah. Made it through the war, fine. Yep. And he said, he said it's, it's weird how many people are killed by being slightly elevated. Uh, yep. Yeah, man. Your body, just don't, be yeah, body don't just fall right body. anymore. Yeah, no, I, remember, I don't know. As a kid, I remember weird. falling 20 feet and I was fine. That would not happen yeah. now. Yeah. And you also had practice. You fell a lot as a kid. Oh yeah, true. Now I'm like I haven't fallen in years. I don't know how it would go. Yeah, <laughs> might be fine. Bet it wouldn't. Probably not. Yeah. Probably not. Not going to try. Not for you or anybody else. <laughs> now, do you have some trivia for me? The Stranger, the album that this song is from, was the highest selling album in Columbia Records history until it was displaced by Born in the USA. Oh, okay. Many years later. Uh, what album did The Stranger displace as the top selling album in Columbia Records history? Uh, Tijuana Brass. <laughs> I like that guess. <laughs> No, but I like it. All right. Who was it? It was uh, Bridge Over Troubled Water. Oh. Yeah. That I would have never guessed out. it. But... Yeah. Kicked them out. Wow. Man, yeah, they had Columbia Records put out some good records. Now, I can't help but notice that when you don't know the trivia question, I just tell you the answer. Yeah. So when I can't get the hint behind you. <laughs> It goes on for 20 minutes. <laughs> idiot. Oh, well, I'm we not could... saying you should change anything. I just literally couldn't help. But that's noticed. pretty that's a pretty funny, fair observation. <laughs> just a thing I saw. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> Don't nobody change a thing. Well, We're pick a week. Pick a week where you'll just relentlessly give me clues. <laughs> I'll be like, have some piece of uh, infrastructure <laughs> that you maybe is near water. And maybe it's just over an, uh, an interstate. Oh, that's so funny. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I feel like a failure if you don't say this, say it. I feel like I failed. So I guess it's hard for me to let go. Yeah, no, you should not. Again, oh, that's change. really, no, that's change really, it. That's really funny. Oh. Uh, all right. So in episode 52, what are we talking about? Well, I'm at the point now, speaking of aphasia, where I can't remember all the songs we've done. Did we do Keeping the Faith? No. That is a, a, a Sue recommendation. Fantastic. That will be one, maybe That's like the third. Stuff in there to talk about. I think that'll be like the third time total we've done a song because somebody else had it on their mind. Great. Yeah. I did that. Uh, verbal aphasia. Doesn't matter. I did a couple before. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> hey, who wants to watch me try to remember something for three more minutes? <laughs> uh. right. Well, we'll call it there. Uh, thank you for tuning in and thanks for watching us get older. Thanks for everything.